Good morning. morning. How's everybody doing? I promise that I will get you standing while you do some processing um, throughout my presentation this morning. So I am very excited to welcome all of you to our district. And I'd like to just share briefly um, that I started working in this district in 2002. Um, This is the second district I've worked in. And uh, my background includes um, similar. I started off in college as a, as a math tutor, and I just really enjoyed uh, teaching others. Started as a teacher, moved on into counseling, then became a site um, and district administrator. So I've been an administrator in this district uh, since 2004. This is my second year in my current position. And I have two beautiful boys. They're ages Ten and seven, um, and a wonderful husband um, who's also an educator. And I think uh, I wouldn't be able to be in the position that I am without the love and support of my extended family. I have uh, a sister who's also a teacher, my my baby sister, and two brothers, and my mom who has really been a role model for me. My my father passed away when um, he was 41. So she was a widow at 40, I'm the eldest of four. And so a lot, of, uh, a lot of resiliency and perseverance in my family. And having, uh, I'm a student who came to this country from Mexico. First language is Spanish. Um, learned English here in school. And I'm just really fortunate to be in a country um, and in a place that honors diversity for the most part at least in California, at least in this part of the world. <laughs> and so we, we want to continue that. And so my passion and my drive for um, equity and ex- excellence for every one of our students is driven by my own personal um, and professional experiences. And so with that, um, I just, I'd like to introduce to you our professional learning community journey that we've been in the Salinas Union High School District since 2005, and this is truly a journey. We never uh, truly get to that place where we should be satisfied because it's about continuously learning and being part of a community that believes that every uh, student can fulfill their highest potential. And so our, our professional learning communities, there's four pillars. There's a, you have a vision about where we want to do, what we want to accomplish. We have a mission. We have some shared values and commitments. And then we have our goals. And so in our district, uh, we're actually considering at this time as we were speaking uh, with Superintendent uh, Mr. Burns about our vision about students learning for life. And maybe it's time to revisit that. We haven't looked at that in a while. And uh, looking at our mission statement, which speaks to really um, educating our students to the highest uh, standards and preparing them to achieve their life's aspirations, whatever they may be, whether it may be uh, going into the workforce, uh, into a career, going into studying for a particular career in a technical education, or going to a four-year university. So. That is our role and our job, and really to make them global uh, thinkers, um, and so that they can really act locally then to change themselves and their lives and the the lives of the community. And so we recently, uh, recently, just last week, being totally transparent, we went through a process with our with our administrators. We have many new administrators in our district, many who were teachers or instructional coaches and now are assistant principals or are in different roles. And we went through a process of really um, developing what are our core values in our district and what do we believe in as administrators. So this is a synthesis. They haven't even seen this because this is how new it is. So you're the first to see this. Um, about what our values uh, are in our district. And what came out of that process was that we all have a belief that our students um, will learn to the highest levels and that we want to prepare them and that they will learn. 
And the other is that every single one of the leaders in this district has a passion for equity and excellence in all that we do. And finally, a belief in collaborative teamwork that begins with building strong, positive relationships. That's with everyone. It begins with your next door neighbor, your teacher, your student who walks into your classroom, the parents, the custodian, the secretary, the bus drivers. We're all committed to helping students be successful. And so building relationships is critical. I have a, a 10 year old, as I shared with you, and he just started sixth grade. And he came home the first day and, the, and so I asked, you know, what did you enjoy about school today? And so he tells me, and I immediately knew which teachers had taken the time to build relationships with him that day. And I was happy that four out of the six did, but I was waiting. So it's day five. I'm still waiting for one more teacher to try and build connections. Um, because that's, he came home with, he was, my math teacher is the greatest. Why? It was so much fun, we played bingo, you know, to learn about each other. We talked about what we like to do, we talked about our hobby, she told us about herself, and every day, so, oh, my math teacher's just amazing, right? Just really connected with the students. And so, that's just important to remember as you begin your first day of school with your students about the importance of building those strong relationships and showing that you care about them. Because after that, they will do anything for you, right? So our goals, um, district-wide goals, these are the Board of Trustee goals as well as our goals in our Local Control Accountability Plan. And you will also see these goals in the Single Plans for Student Achievement. All of our goals are aligned. Why did you select us? to begin or continue your professional career? Do our vision, mission, and values resonate with you? And how will you demonstrate your commitment to our students? And so there is a, a basic um, underlying assumption, right? What is that assumption? That you'll get along. That you'll get along, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Build those relationships, right? Continuously learning yourself as well as your students from each other. Very nicely said. So this is our, our PLC cycle. And as you can see, we're like someone mentioned earlier, this is a student-centered organization. And within your PLCs, uh, you mentioned also how you, it needs to be data-driven, looking at student work and analysis. It's not from your gut, like, well, I think all my students, you know, mastered the standard, right? There needs to be evidence that you're continuously looking at, you're analyzing it, you're sharing best practices, and then you're looking at ways to provide interventions for your students or extensions for your students, depending on where they are. So it is a continuous learning cycle. It's an action uh, research model that we're continuously looking to improve. And the characteristics of a PLC are, as a district, you know, it's really important that we also have shared values, a mission, and we have goals, and that's why we're strategically aligning all of our goals so that we're ensuring that we're all driving in the same direction. And we may do it differently at the different sites based on the culture based on the needs of your students. <coughs> you may do things differently in your PLC team, and that's okay. So long as we get to the end result that our students are going to what? What's our end result? That they're learning and being successful in order to what? Global citizens, college, career ready. Okay, I'm checking for understanding here. So, right in, in to the highest level, that we have rigorous um, standards and that we offer the support that they need. So, we need to be results oriented. So I'm gonna give you some of our big ideas, okay? Focus on learning, 
having a collaborative culture and focus on results. Those are our big ideas, making it, trying to make it simple. So one thing that is really important is that as teachers, you know, we have a learning objective, we have a learning outcome, and we know what it is because we sit down, we write the lesson plan, but how are we making that transparent to our students? And how are we making it transparent multiple times throughout the lesson? Not just at the beginning of the lesson when we start it, and not just at the end when we're doing the assessment, but throughout the lesson as we are checking for understanding. We're constantly having to ensure that our students know what is the purpose of the activity that they're doing, why. It's really important to get through, because we know as educators and as teachers why we're doing it, but we need to make that transparent to them. And so I'd like for us to do another pair share. So you're gonna stand, select a different partner this time, and I want you to look at these questions. How do you ensure or plan to ensure that every student knows the expected learning outcome will be what it will be on a daily basis as well as how will you monitor their learning so um, so yes the next the next big idea is that we uh, want to have a collaborative culture and you know and sometimes when when um, thing that I learned as I went from being a teacher to a counselor uh, to a site administrator is that sometimes it's more difficult for adults to learn how to collaborate um, than it is for our students in the classroom. And so we really want to foster uh, adults in our buildings collaborating with one another. Our district has invested a lot of uh, money um, and resources in, for ensuring that we have PLC time during the day. So every middle school and Everett Alvarez High School collaborates every Wednesday morning and the other high schools, comprehensive high schools, collaborate almost every Wednesday morning. Um, our alternative education sites and Salinas Adult School collaborate within their schedules because they have different schedules. So we have put time within your workday to give you the opportunity to collaborate with one another. And that is very, very important, and I think it speaks volumes to how much we believe in this process. However, it's only going to work if we're all open and flexible to both learning um, from others and sharing. We need to do both. Right, and that really the focus is about our students and improving instruction for our students every day and that we're doing the best that we can because we're, like we said earlier, this is continuous improvement, right? And so it's not about um, hurt feelings or egos or anything getting in the way. It's really about let's talk about our students and how are they doing and what do we need to do to either provide interventions for them or if they're ahead and they've already learned it, how do we provide those extensions for them? So that's really what we're after. Uh, our PLC essential questions, which uh, Mr. Burns alluded to earlier in his presentation, these are basically the four PLC essential questions. What do we expect our students to learn, right? So what are, what's the learning outcome? What are the standards? And how will we know, right? We, so we spoke about uh, con continuously monitor th monitoring their learning. Um, how will we respond if they don't learn? What are those interventions that are going to be in place? And then how will we respond when they already know it? So what are those extensions that we're going to provide? So these are the four PLC essential questions that when you are in your PLC team, this is how it becomes student-centered. So PLC time is not about talking about your department, it's not talking about uh, any uh, other operational pieces. The focus is on instruction. And, that, and every PLC team has a course lead or a course facilitator. Um, this individual um, volunteered <laughs> or was volunteered. Uh, they do get a stipend uh, to facilitate your 
Wednesday morning collaboratives. We also have a district website for our PLCs that you can reference in our, in our webpage for under the staff portal. Uh, there's a link for every school site and every department so that you can go in there, you upload your agendas, your minutes, your formative assessments. Last year was our first year and we only we only opened it up to school teachers um, in that building. However, eventually our goal is that we, are, we will truly be a PLC district-wide so that we can share all of this information across the district. And so I would encourage you to go into the website and look at what your PLC teams did last year so that you're familiar with it. Um, some schools used it more than others, some departments used it more than others, and so we're trying to build this culture that we're really gonna share everything electronically so it's more accessible, and we're sharing best practices um, and tools as well. So the last uh, big idea is the focus on results. And how do we measure uh, our efforts in relation to our mission? So we have to be able to assess whether or not the results that we're getting is, are what we want right for our students. And so we must seek the data um, that you brought up earlier. We must analyze it to ensure that we are doing that. So we are continuously district-wide as well as by school site and by PLC team looking at our data. So with that, I would like to do our third and last pair share. So meet this time I'm gonna, I'm gonna challenge you to break out of your school team and maybe meet someone from another school. And what ideas do you have to build a strong PLC team with shared values and what questions might you have for your course lead or your course facilitator at your school site? And just to close, um, I'd like to just share that um, my message to you is to be kind, to be humble, and to have fun and really have a great year. Thank you so much and welcome to our district.